So OpenAI has just announced DALL-E 3, their latest image generation model. So they have a blog post of it. Now it's been almost more than a year since the release of DALL-E 2 and there have been numerous image generation competitors that have come out into the market. You have Stable Diffusion, you have Midjourney and of course those ones have been utilized um, and taking a lot of the market share. Now this is a blog post of the release. Now the model hasn't been released yet and they've just they've been teasing all these images on uh, uh, Twitter. Okay now let's dive in. So DALL-E 3 Dali 3 understands significantly more nuance and detail than other previous systems, allowing you to easily translate your data into exceptionally accurate images. Okay, so here we have some examples. We have uh, avocado and uh, uh, a spoon. And the avocado is saying, yeah, I just feel so empty inside. So this is quite interesting because I'm sure a lot of you know Dolly 2 was terrible in generating uh, text like this. You'd always get um, anything, you know, any sort of text that would just look like gibberish um, or some uh, hieroglyphics of some kind. Now, I'd be very impressed, you know, it's very impressive that this is actually from the model itself and it comes out so perfectly. Here's the prompt. The prompt is an illustration of an avocado sitting in a therapist chair saying I just feel so empty inside with a pit sized hole in its center. The therapist a spoon scribbles notes. Okay. <laughs> okay so here's another one. A 2D animation of folk music band composed of anthropomorphic autumn leaves each playing a traditional bluegrass uh, instrument amidst a rustic for a sit setting dappled with the soft light of harvest moon and i think this one is also cool it's like a lychee inspired spherical chair um, now what makes dali 3 much better and noting it here um, is that they're going to be combining it into uh, chat gpt which is quite cool um, so if we continue scrolling down here we see that this one understands, DALL-E 3 understands text far more than DALL-E 2 and this allows for more textual descriptions and uh, specificity in the text or in the image generation. So here it's, you have, um, these are numerous, numerous uh, prompts. So the sidewalk bustling with pedestrians enjoying the nightlife, another one is a bustling city street. So there's many points of uh, uh, detail um, in the prompt that you can add. You couldn't really do this before with the previous um, image generations and we'll, I can't wait till we actually have access to this thing and then we can actually try to reproduce um, these things. Here's more. They say even the same prompt, DALL-E 3 delivers significant improvements over DALL-E 2. Um, this is one picture I, um, or image generation I liked a lot from when DALL-E 2 came out. I, I remember this one. Um, the basketball, um, an expensive oil painting of a basketball player um, dunking. And it's so interesting. Um, obviously, one is more abstract, you know, and looks the part of expensive, of the expensive oil painting. Well, the other looks more like something you'd find on uh, art station. And of course, it has more fidelity, but um, um, the sty this style is... Um, obviously very uh, very different uh, far more detail I, I think I think both of these are accomplishing different things and they both look great in my opinion now here is where we get to the good stuff so DALL-E 3 is built on natively on ChatGPT which lets you use ChatGPT as a brainstorming partner and a refiner of your prompts um, so this is great they're integrating DALL-E into ChatGPT which is awesome because um, with DALL-E 2 it was actually a separate service so because of it being a separate service, it wasn't getting as much uh, attention as it could have. You know, and ChatGPT gets hundreds of daily active users. So having it integrated in there will be pretty great. Of course, it's going to be on the ChatGPT Plus. And then they had a short clip for us sort of displaying how it would look like. So here you'd be on the ChatGPT. Okay, let's see. Asking for a hedgehog, and it looks like the prompt gives the hedgehog a name. The name of the hedgehog is Larry, and 
through the prompting is just um, the prompter the user is just referring to the hedgehog as Larry and um, it's not even calling it a hedgehog anymore so it's it's quite amazing how um, um, this this works you see just further creating a story for Larry um, and bedtime story so amazing pretty pretty impressive it's a very clever move by um, OpenAI again because the other competitors um, we'll get to it later because we're gonna go on we're gonna go on Twitter or X um, to sort of see what people are saying and also just to stress test it because of course these are these are all prompts that um, OpenAI want us to see right so we're gonna stress test it um, you know the OpenAI team have access to it so we're gonna see precisely what um, this thing is capable of my only before we go on X, my only hope is we get an academic paper of some kind on um, how this thing uh, works, sort of like we got with DALI 2 and how the diffusion model works, but I'm very pessimistic on that front. Anyway, let's go on to X. Um, so here we have a prompt by an OpenAI engineer. Someone requested and said, previous image models really struggle with spatial relations and counting. Can it generate this for zebras running? this savannah with a lion chasing after them above the zebras is an eagle there's no other animal in the picture and um, this is the generation we have five zebras instead of four we got the lion we got the eagle honestly it's not so bad um, again I like a bit more stress test but this is actually not so bad it didn't get the uh, quantity correct um, I think that might take a bit more uh, time for, uh, OpenAI and um, the competitors to get that. Here's another prompt by Nick St. Pierre. These are side by sides of DALI 3 and Mid Journey. So, an illustration of a human heart made of translucent glass standing on a pedestal amidst a stormy sea. Rays of sunlight pierce the clouds, illuminating the heart, revealing a tiny universe within. So, on the top, we have DALI. Three, and at the bottom we have mid journey. I'd say Dali three wins in this in this one, for sure. Let's go to the next one. A modern architecture building with a large glass window situated on a cliff, overlooking a serene sea at sunset. So on the left, this one is Dali three, and next on the right we have mid journey. So here, obviously, mid journey. I'd say uh, wins. Mid journey looks so much more realistic. The Dali three one looks almost like a three D rendering. Whereas the mid journey encapsulates so many things, the the lighting and um, there's barely any pixelation, um, you know, and fuzziness. The lighting also helps, of course. Whereas this one, the lighting is all it's all over the place. Um, okay, so um, next we have a middle-aged woman of ancient descent. Her dark hair streaked with silver, appearing fractured and splintered integrally embedded with a sea of broken porcelain. The porcelain glistens. So on the top we have Dali 3, and then on the bottom we have Midjourney. So obviously Dali 3 wins, yeah, I mean, come on now. Um, I wonder, the thing is, I wonder if uh, Nick did uh, zero shots. I'm, I'm expecting he did. And that also, another question is whether OpenAI did zero shot. Um, that's another one. You know, whether this is the first output um, that came out. So something already quite well, not good is that um, he uh, Nick Nick prompted middle-aged woman of Asian descent and looks like it uh, the model didn't accurately um, encapsulate that at least mid sorry mid journey didn't accurately encapsulate that um, next um he has the lychee so we have Dali three and mid journey Dali three obviously I'd say wins. Yeah, and those are a few comparisons, pretty pretty cool. And we have some comments from Jim Fan, our a senior researcher at uh, NVIDIA. Um, he says, the multi-term dialogue is an excellent UI to collect human feedback, explain what's wrong with the generated image in a freeform language, giving a very grained annotations for each refinement. Um, he also comments that, it's far superior uh, algorithmic efficiency. Midjourney mostly ignored copyright issues and have spun the data file wheel for much longer, which means they likely have a much larger data set to work with than OpenAI. Ecosystem integration with ChatGPT is a killer move, he says, 
and existing user base. So Midjourney has 16 million users and ChatGPT has 100 million uh, users. Distribution is not an issue. Nick said it's time to get out of Discord talking about Midjourney. Midjourney can only access it through Discord at the moment, which makes it very difficult to for most people to access. We can go on Nick's Twitter to just see uh, what he said. And here we are. He says Midjourney needs to get out of Discord ASAP and he's further commenting that the onboarding experience is so brutal for anyone who isn't already familiar with Discord. Even if you're familiar with Discord, it's over a dozen steps just to get set up and start prompting. So again, it's a very clever marketing uh, um, strategy um, by OpenAI to integrate it to ChatGPT. Next, we'll be viewing an article We're saying that OpenAI has just killed prompt engineering with DALI 3. So again, since since um, since DALI 3 is going to be integrated with the chat with ChatGPT, prompting has actually uh, become easier, and this whole concept of prompt engineering is actually uh, uh, nullified by OpenAI. Again, prompt engineering has enabled um, it. It became such a complex as well. And this is why Midjourney really took off on uh, Discord because everyone is sort of able to share their uh, prompts um, very easily and their prompts would be super complicated and, um, and now you can get just simply, you can get just as impressive stuff without the whole hogwash of prompt engineering or human engineering as uh, Keith Dagar um, of MLST calls it. One thing I find interesting is just to show like um, there was a big style that took off, sp a spiral town uh, style that took off. Now just to make something like this you needed a control net input which is uh, obviously not accessible to most people. Really intense, um, intense uh, what is it, uh, prompt engineering. Um, now this style really took off on Twitter and there's many articles on it if you just search spiral time i'm sure you can find many things on it um and so again it, this sort of step by open ai will make image generation more more accessible to broader crowd as shown in that video of the parents basically uh um, creating a, a character for their five-year-old the article mentioned something interesting which sam altman said which is Sam Alt Altman predicted a while ago that prompt engineering was was a temporary phase of generative AI. I agreed back then, but argued that it would take it could take a lot of time to get the models to the point where we wouldn't need it to translate our ideas into a language they could understand. It seems that that milestone, at least for image generation models, has been achieved. I hope we get a research paper on this um, by OpenAI and I can't wait to get our hands on it soon. So they say it will be released next month in October, so we'll see. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, please uh, like and subscribe, and I'll leave you with a completely AI-generated clip of Star Wars. Bye-bye. Uh, I think he's near. Hello again, Lisa Ratano. I need the artifact. Tunoka, this. So you don't want to play nice? What if I let the Empire know about your illegal operation? I think he's over here. Vale. Jost lives up. You can tell Vader about this one, not me.